People of Earth, good evening. We are December 18, 2023, and in these times of great awakening for humanity on this planet, my mission is to bring you understanding on the current events in this galactic quadrant. I am Emissary Elena Danan from the star nations present in the soul system, and I am delighted to welcome you for this ninth episode of Star Nation News. The Sikar Empire launched simultaneous attacks on three star systems located in the fifth galactic quadrant of Nataru, adjacent to ours, trying to take by force three stage three planetary civilizations, Agura, Stemis IV, and Darbarian VI. A call for help was instantly sent and the Galactic Federation of Worlds immediately responded by transferring combat fleets to these star systems. Among these fleets, one is Neguma. The space fights shouldn't last very long. While on the ground, resistance is massively enforced by troops from the Galactic Federation of Worlds. However, this could be the spark, igniting a long-awaited global galactic war between the Galactic Alliance of Nataru and the Shiskar Empire. Tactical Operations High Commander Jor Hell from the combat model ship XL6, known as the Excelsior, gives us more clarity on the matter. It would seem, says High Commander Jor Hell, that the Sikars are behaving as if they were unafraid of the Negumat, which we understand is a provocative lure. The Sikar rarely attack by force, a civilization, avoiding consequences with the Galactic Federation of Worlds, as they would be breached the Prime Directive. Instead, they have been known for using specific tactics of infiltration, well perfected with time and experience, to collapse societies from the inside and make them ripe for consenting enslavement. These three coordinated attacks, continues uh, High Commander Joe Elf, in the fifth quadrant demonstrate a drastic change in their method, betraying a provocative agenda. Our analyze brings the evidence that they surely feel unsettled since the Gnomopole have joined the Federation recently. The Sikar are known to abide by pride and honor in rather stubborn and unreasonable ways. It is clear that this move from the Sikar will not benefit the empire at short and at long term, says High Commander Chorel. On the other hand, the Negumak newly members of the Galactic Federation of Worlds have also ancient collateral treaties with the Anak Empire. If, or rather when, a war is to blow up with the Sikar Empire at a galactic level, we will assuredly see the end of existence of the Sikar as an empire. They may be obliterated. Anach Prince Ea commands on these attacks in the fifth quadrant. He says his father, Emperor Ata Ra Anu, is glad to honor his engagement with the Gnomopo government by providing armed assistance in the conflict with the Sikar, and especially if this is to unfold into a war at a galactic scale. Anu never engaged in the war against the Nebu. At the time, only to protect the empire, the Anak Empire, says Ia. At the time, the Galactic Federation of Worlds didn't exist yet. It wasn't yet formed. The Gnomopo were still a growing civilization, and the Anak had no allies in Nataru. 
despite their expanding power. And the cost in lives wasn't worth it, thought Anu at the time. This decision at the time of the Orion Wars had been badly received by the Orion resistance. The Black League, who saw it as a betrayal and abandon. Although Anu was always eager to expand the empire's territories, he always did it by treaties and never by war. Something we have to honor and acknowledge with the Anar Empire is that despite the great power of their defense forces, they never used it in an invasive or aggressive ways. The structure of the Anar Empire is founded upon the two pillars of peace and diplomacy. What Enlil did on earth wasn't following these ethics and wasn't recognized by Anu. He did it in his name, not in the name of his father and the empire. As we know, Enlil was half Sikar and acting accordingly to the Sikar agenda. This is particularly the reason why, says Prince Ia, Emperor Anu is glad to take part into the elimination of the Sikar threat in this galaxy. And he will employ all means necessary to the end. To this end. Ia says that none in the soul system shall worry about this, as this war will not impact the soul system. Ia added that the inevitable fight for balance and justice is what powers the forces of evolution. And it is part of a natural phenomenon that is to be acknowledged on all levels. Four Cedar Arcs have now been activated in a Kuiper Belt, and they are broadcasting frequencies to Earth meant to disable low-frequency devices and stimulate the awakening of the population. These specific frequencies are targeting more particularly the star seed and voice, members of the Cedar's cultures, in the purpose of actuating their spiritual potential, making it for them easier to communicate with their soul clusters, while the Mora Trio may continue to search for their envoy members on Earth. The coming times are very promising as we see the memory activation of more and more intergalactic star seeds and voids. Altian Emissary Una from the Intergalactic Confederation is relaying a message from the Council of the Patal which gathers representatives of the 24 cultures composing the group of scientists known as the Cedars. Here is what she reported to me. Dear Earthlings, this message is for you. The war that raged through your star system is now over. Although you still need to fight another battle, the most important of all. The battle is the core key of the problem for you, for your liberation. It has happened during these two last decades that great changes were set in place by the Galactic Alliance of Nataru. These changes bore satisfying results as the awakening the freeing and the unlocking of human consciousness played a ma major role in the earth liberation. You were meant one day to open your eyes and listen truly with your heart, your mind, and realize that you had been played for a long, long time. Now that you open your eyes, you can see the extent of the horrors perpetrated by the dark souls who are in control of this planet and of your lives. 
with knowledge will come responsibility. It will be up to you, in turn, to wake up and guide those who are still asleep. With knowledge comes responsibility. When you take in hand the destiny of your civilization and of your planet, you become custodian of your kind and of your habitat. It is one thing to get rid of the demons who roam the land. It is another challenge to make the land fertile again and grow abundance on it. Soon, you will need to be prepared for the times to come may surprise you. When you realize that the management of the planet is all down to you, the population. Yes, we truly mean this. We recommend that you begin to prepare now on how you will desire to manage your land according to the harmony of the cosmic natural laws of the evolution in the respect of your environment. Will you be ready to take over millennia of plundering of your natural resources by the deep stage? Yes, you will, Earthlings, you will. To take over a disastrous management, you need first to repair, to clear, to cleanse, and to rethink the whole system. Make a new one. No more killing of other life forms. Let nature re-equilibrate itself, rebalance. Nature doesn't need you to perform so. Be prepared, be ready to come up with new solutions that are clean and harmless, and most of all, respectful. The free energy technology patents will be released and also new ones, many new technologies will be shared from us to you. In ecology, farming, nutrition, and medical department. We will help you rebuild your world, your society. But first, you must do the clearing in all domains and on all levels. And when the land is ready, when the planet is free and safe, we will be here. The Patal Council. So indeed, as the Patal Council was saying in their message, it is very important that people of Earth, all of us, understand that once the dark is eliminated, well, uh, it's not amazing straight away. We need to rebuild, okay? We need to rebuild this planet you need to visualize future you want and take actions for the environment and clear the land. That was a specific and very interesting um, message and invitation and suggestion from the Patal to clear the land. There's many ways to clear the land. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, you know, you can do it energetically by raising frequencies. And that's what I would recommend to do. Whatever means clearing the land where you are, even if you live in a city, for instance, spreading vibrations of love, compassion, but also raising your frequency where you are clears all your surrounding, all your environment from residual lower frequencies. 
Well, this this was a very very uh, interesting report from the the Patal, and they make a point that once we, as humans of Earth, have gotten rid of the tyranny by standing up by ourselves for ourselves, that's our graduation test. Well, they will be here, they say. That means they will. There will be first contact, civilian contact with them. I may remind that um, these star nations, be they from this galaxy or another, are not here to solve our problems. They are here to assist us and protect us, encouraging us relentlessly to get the job done ourselves treat our human problems and graduate into an adult age of humanity. Well, also something else about the, the, the war that is, uh, has blasted in the neighboring quadrants. Well, that's it, that is very, uh, very interesting. In the galaxy, in the universe, conflicts are all the time. Conflicts work with evolution. So it is not because we are hearing about uh, a Sikar attack on some worlds that we need to panic or think bad for us or just go into scare, fear. No, okay? This is occurring all the time, everywhere. At the moment when I where I'm speaking to you, in this galaxy alone, there may be thousands of wars going on, you know. We are talking about the Sikar Empire because they were involved in Earth, on Earth. So, and it's still interesting because the groups helping the Earthlings are still fighting the Sikar Empire. And it's the follow up, following up of the events that have occurred in the star system, you know. So, <coughs> excuse me. Bit of, a bit of a cold. <laughs> Um, pardon me. So this uh, this Sikar attack, this Sikar war, that could be, um, as uh, Jor El said, the, the the spark that could ignite uh, the uh, galactic war at the scale of the galaxy. It is not as scary as we could think, okay? Because the forces now of the, the Galactic Ocean of Worlds, the Galactic Alliance with everyone, are joined with the Gnomopo. And for the first time in history, as I covered in previous uh, Star Nation news, for the first time in history, the Dianach Empire is going to work, has started working already with the Galactic Alliance. They had in the past a few treaties with a few common uh, interventions on operations with the Federation, but when it was at its beginning, but never really at an official big scale and you know diplomatic official uh, level. Uh, the other empire is now joining forces with the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Of course, they would have done it by themselves, but because the Negumak Gnumopu had ancient agreements with the Anach Empire, it makes things easier. And the Negumak, as you know now, are involved because they are members of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. So here is how, how the diplomatic moves are occurring at the moment in this galaxy. Very good for uh, the the members of the Federation and the worlds they protect as Terra or Earth or Key is. The, the humans of Key as a planetary civilization so are not yet official member of the Galactic Federation of Worlds, even though uh, the space programs work with the Galactic Federation of Worlds since, since the 1940s, at a civilian level and a global official level, Earth is not yet member, official member. So because of this, 
we are not going to get involved in the war in the fifth quadrant. Okay. Well, think, oh, how lucky, <laughs> how lucky that we will not need to go to war for the fifth quadrant. Okay. Well, you can think like this, which fair enough, fair enough. But um, I would say, ah, oh, you know, these guys, the Federation and the, the Galactic Alliance, they have gotten the star system read of the Sikar Empire and the Dark Fleet and the Nebu and the Alliance of the Six. That would be nice to, to help them, thank them. This day will come where we will proudly help them to in their in the in saving the oppressed and making justice in the galaxy for the moment it's in process well um the star system is safe don't worry but the the Sika empire so it betrays something very interesting as Rohel was describing They changed tactics. The Sikar changed tactic. They did something they never did. Be, they've never done before. Okay, Jorhel, as he said, suspects a provocative lure. As he says, can be a trap, but there's no way because the Sikar have no support in the galaxy and beyond. We know that it's a certainty. Uh, they have tried. They had tried to. Uh, get an alliance with the Maitra from Andromeda, who had tried to come back into this galaxy, but the Federation had closed all the portals, interdimensional frequency portals in this galaxy. So the, the, the Maitra actually cannot penetrate Nataru from interdimensional planes. The Sikar are on their own. They have tried to reform the Alliance of the Six that was dismantled. The Alliance of the Six that was created by the Nebu, I can remember you, may rem remind you, uh, was composed of the Nebu, the Sikar, the Kili Tokurt, the Solipsirai, the Zeta Reticuli, and the Mitra. Well, all of this has dis been dismantled. The Mitra cannot come back. The Nebu don't exist anymore. The Kili Tokurt want to do their trade and they were, no, that's enough. No more war. We want to be successful to do their, our trade. We are not an invasive uh, culture. No more treaties with you guys. Uh, Zeta Reticuli and Solipsiri, since the Nebu has fallen, they are themselves defeated and trying to rebuild with difficulty their civilizations. It's very hard their hives, etc. So Sikars are on their own. They cannot rebuild the alliance of the six. And with who else would they do alliance? We have no actually uh, corroboration that they would have made alliance with anyone else. Why are we so sure of this? Why this doesn't explain the change on behavior? Because you can easily make a parallel between the behavior of the Sikar and the behavior of the deep state and their remnant minions on Earth. I can remind you that the Sikar, a Sikar Pindar, was at the head of the Illuminati with co collaborating, of course, with. Um, uh, um, Ninurta, son of Enlil, and also Marduk. Well, the Sikar have weaved and created the Illuminati system with, with Enlil and, and his son. So all is based on the same functioning. Okay? Now on Earth, that the deep state is collapsing, they are defeated, they are pushing all the agenda like uh, in stress, in emergency. Suddenly they, they, they rush in putting everything forward, all their, you know, 
fear campaign and anything that's been happening when we were um, not able to go out and let you figure this out, you know, and all the poison and things. And also all the, the attempt of Third World War trying on Earth to play two parties, two countries, which are actually Palestine and Israel, which are owned by the Illuminati both, play them to go to war against each other, financed both by the same guys behind, same banks, and getting by treaties to get the whole rest of the world into a global third world war, which is not going to happen. And it's not working. Look at now what the CCAR are doing. They also change behavior in the same way, panicking, doing unreasonable acts, suddenly violent, suddenly betraying a last chance attack on these three uh, very abundant civilizations. Darbarian 6, six Temis 4, and uh, Adura. Well, that really, really parallels what's happening on Earth. Sikar getting two different factions to fight together and bring a global galactic war. Well, uh, this is a bit of a panic because whoever they work with, well, they are on their own, we know that, but what they have on the other side, the Galactic Alliance, the Galactic Federation of Worlds, the, the many forces, the Ashtar Command, the Gnomopo Negumak, and the Anach Empire. Wow, the Anach Empire is getting involved. I mean, and it's the same on Earth. The deep state with their miserable, horrible wars and trying to do things to the population. What they have against them, they have no chance to succeed. No chance. You know? So it's exactly the same pattern. Desperate act of last chance. Trying to get everyone to fight. But uh, it's a big mistake, either on Earth, either the, the, in the, the fifth quadrant, because it's lost in advance for them. The echo and the parallel is quite interesting. It's quite interesting. So this will be a very quick war. It can escalate to a galactic war if the whole Sikar Empire just gets involved which apparently it may occur. And um, the Intergalactic Confederation will not get involved because uh, they, they are here to like surveyors, okay? That's this galactic affairs. It's like on Earth, we deal with our Earth problem. In Nataru, we deal with the Nataru problems. Okay, that's also at a greater scale, the evolution of the galaxy. But um, the, the resistance on these three worlds are, uh, is actually very efficient, very well uh, um, experienced. So we shouldn't see a long conflict. Uh, it's gonna be quite, um, it has started already to be quite uh, violent. With the Gnomopo, nothing goes smoothly. I do not know uh, what are the potential, what is the potential of the force of the Anak Empire, but I know they are uh, extremely powerful. It's the oldest empire in the galaxy. It is called the Old Empire. So um, let's see how this unfolds. And as it was expected, and you know, um, before um, this is 
the opportunity that we put an end to the tyranny of the, the Sikar Empire. So it is happening. But let this not distract you. On Terra, because on Terra, this is not affecting Terra. On Terra, you have one thing to think about. Raising our frequency and getting rid of the system, getting rid of the deep state, stop giving them power, stop consenting into their fear tactics, breaking the illusion, and this is happening only when you find who you truly are. See you next week.